Really appreciate you all being here. This is, uh, it's been a very, very uh, hard 48 hours. Uh, the toughest decision uh, that I've had to make, um, maybe ever. Uh, and that's because of um, how much I love this place, uh, UNM, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, the fans, our entire setup uh, here has been amazing. Um, it really came down to uh, making the decision to uh, have an opportunity to go to UCLA. Uh, it's the pinnacle of college basketball. Um, it's one of those lifetime opportunities that is really, really difficult to pass up. Um, and it wasn't something that I went looking for. Um, UCLA sought me out. Um, I think it's a great compliment um, to New Mexico, to UNM, um, that UCLA, and when you talk about UCLA, you are talking about the pinnacle of college basketball, uh, an incredible university that um, wants something from New Mexico. And it's about as good a compliment as I can give uh, UNM and New Mexico is that um, um, I thought I was going to be here a long time. I just signed a 10-year deal. Uh, that was the plan. Sometimes plans get messed up and the timing, you never know what it is. But uh, I had no idea that this opportunity would present itself. I'm humbled. I'm honored. Uh, I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about the challenges of leading a, a program and being at an institution that uh, my childhood uh, one of my childhood heroes and John Wooden, who's from Indiana, uh, obviously walked that sideline at Pauley. That is a uh, – it's kind of still eerie and probably hadn't sunk in yet uh, to the meaning of all of that. Uh, but I just can't thank um, – I can't thank UNM and I can't thank the people of New Mexico and the Albuquerque community enough. Uh, our family has had nothing but good times here. The people treated us unbelievable. Uh, as a media group, you have been tremendous. Um, it's just been a great relationship over and through everything. And I can't say thank you enough. This was something that just came out of uh, came out of left field that uh, was an opportunity that I just felt from our family and from my career, um, I couldn't pass that up. And I'm excited about it. But again, um, it had nothing to do with UNM. It had nothing to do with um, I'm very, very proud of what our program has been able to do through six years. Uh, we've built something very special, winning six championships in six years and winning back-to-back -back, uh, championships for two straight years is one thing. And those titles will always mean something to me. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing that I'll take with me and uh, the lifelong friends that I've developed here in the area uh, is one. Secondly, will be what I, I've seen our young men grow into. Uh, and that's always been a big push of mine that it's, yeah, we're about excellence. We're about championships. We're about winning. That's the business we're in. Um, but having our young men grow, develop, graduate, and now go into other communities and be positive citizens uh, and make a difference, that's what this is all about. And I've been very fortunate of the players that I've been able to coach here and really appreciate the efforts that they've done. Uh, very much appreciate the efforts of Paul and his staff and administration, uh, of everybody that has helped the success that we've had. They've bought in and believed in our six years here, and I really appreciate that. Steve, on Wednesday you were really emphatic about committing to New Mexico, and you really made that a point of emphasis. And did, when you were saying those things, did you consider this maybe a possibility? No idea. Uh, and the press conference Wednesday, was I think not so much commitment of New Mexico as I've always had a commitment to New Mexico. It was a commitment that we had a very good season. Uh, Wednesday's press conference was just about how are we talking about a season that wasn't very good. Uh, that's what that press conference uh, ended up being about. It wasn't so much about the next 10 years or anything else. It wasn't hardly in contract talk, if I remember, it, it, at all that Wednesday. Um, that press conference was all about Jim Rome, and the Wall Street Journal, and uh, why I think we had a good year. That's what I remember in that press conference. Coach, you going to take uh, Corey and Bryce with you? Or? Well, yeah, they're family. Um, you know, so um, the family's excited about it. Um, but, you know, there's sadness too uh, because um, we've loved it here. Uh, every family member here has loved it. We've had great times, and we've got incredible friends uh, that – you know, hopefully now will follow us uh, in what we're doing in L.A. 
and we'll continue to have uh, one eye on what's going on here at UNM and uh, what the Lobos are doing. It's um, it's just a career path, uh, but uh, you know we're excited as a family. We we moved here uh, from Iowa City, not knowing a whole lot uh, about what was going to happen or take place, and we couldn't have been more thrilled uh, about what took place in those six years. And we hope that. Um, those are the same feelings we're going to have six years from now uh, in Los Angeles. Coach, should Craig Neal be the next head coach here? Well, uh, uh, Paul's that, that's Paul. Paul's the boss. Obviously, if you're asking me for my endorsement, um, Coach Neal's ready. Uh, coach Neal has been my associate head coach now for nine years, uh, three years at Iowa, six years here. And if you look at our track record over those nine years, we've averaged 26 wins a year. Uh, we've been to every we've been to postseason every year except our last year at, at Iowa. And Rudy Davalos would tell you they made a mistake on the NIT. We finished fourth in the Big Ten, and we should have been in the NIT that year. So uh, eight of the nine years have produced postseason play. Um, we have won seven championships in those nine years, a league championships of some sort. Um, he's got an incredible basketball mind. Uh, of all the people I've ever worked with or been around, uh, nobody knows the game of basketball more than he does. Uh, and he knows our team. He knows the climate. He knows the culture of UNM. He knows what it's like to walk down the ramp. Uh, and he knows what it's like to uh, organize a basketball team in a lot of different ways. And um, I would highly endorse him because I think he's ready. Uh, I think the players will respond to him. I think the fans and boosters would respond very positively to him. But ultimately, uh, that's an administration decision. But um, – I, I very much, I 100% believe in what Coach Neal can do. Aside from that next decision, then here at UNM, what coaches have you talked at all with anybody about coaching staff at UCLA? Well, I've obviously talked to my staff this morning, um, and uh, difficult meeting uh, because it probably shocks them, and uh, difficult players meeting because that's not easy. Uh, they're all part of our family, uh, not just them, but our coaches' families, and then the players are a big part. They, they, are, they become like your kids. Uh, so those are two difficult meetings. So it's kind of getting through today uh, with these meetings. And then um, we'll sit back and look um, about what my staff is going to look like and, and moving forward. But, uh, you know, hopefully Coach Neal can get this opportunity. If not, obviously he's the top candidate for me. Coach, when other injury? coaches have left here at UNM, they've talked about the fishbowl and the pressure and, you know, it's too much and the high expectations, that sort of stuff. Did any of that – and the press conference on Wednesday, alluding to you know some fans who didn't have a grip on reality. Did did any of that have to do with the reason you're leaving? I'm going to UCLA. <laughs> you know, if 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 I was going somewhere else, you know, you might be able to come up with that you know rationale. But I'm going to UCLA. It's um, 11 national championships. Uh, the expectations there, the pressure there on a national stage is, is maybe as great anywhere. Uh, it's a university of excellence. Um, there, there's a lot. Uh, I think in my business, JP, there's pressures you know, at every turn. You know, you look at what we've done in six years. Um, to have a press conference like we had a, on Wednesday, uh, yeah, that's odd. It's odd to me because of what we've done in six years. But it is. It's, it's what have you done lately? Well, what have you done lately? You lost to Harvard. Uh, you forget that we cut down nets at UNLV, um, UNLV. And, and that was fun. You know, I want our fans to remember that, that they can change the floor at UNLV, they can change the signage at UNLV, but I guarantee those are the nets they shot on. And to cut those nets down two years in a row, that's a lot of fun. So, no, that had nothing to do with it. In fact, um, it, Wednesday, I had no – I had no knowledge uh, of anything. You know, this really has been a quick 48-hour period, a lot of stress, um, a lot of talks with the family, um, but it just felt right. It, 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 you know, it feels awful to leave here because you're so happy. Uh, and I know I could have been happy here for a long, long time, and we would have continued to win, and we continue to win championships. Um, but when an opportunity presents itself like UCLA, um, I, it was just really difficult in the end to say no to that. You talked about it being a hard decision was uh, being happy, like you just said. Part of it then, were you thinking about loyalty and all that stuff and what you built here? And yeah, you think about all those things. Um, and, and I hope, you know, I know there's going to be, uh, you know, people are, uh, be upset, be frustrated. Uh, that's all part of the emotion. Uh, I feel those same things. Um, trust me, it, it, there's a lot of sadness that comes into this because we put our stamp on a lot of things. The pit was renovated during our tenure here. Uh, this wing of the pit um, 
I helped. Uh, I, Paul did a great job in allowing Coach Neil and I to be a part of those drawings and actually being the architect of this wing. Um, we got to see the flow of our strength room, our our training room, our locker room. So we got the planning of all that. And then when you look at the pictures in our offices, that's our fingerprint. Um, so it's hard. Uh, but it's the four rings that we won here will go with me. Uh, I'm not – it's not like they, I put them in a safety deposit box. Those things will be out and – uh, I look at them often. I've got fond memories from here and nothing but great things and experiences about UNM. And, and six years ago, I didn't know if that would be the case. Uh, but what Paul told me in the interview six years ago, that those things happen. And that you don't always get a chance to work for bosses like that and a university like that that tells you tells you something and then follows through with it. And uh, nobody's more appreciative of the time that they've had coaching here than I have. And I hope fans have appreciated it, and I hope the fans will – Continue to be who they are, uh, Lobo fans that support the student athletes that are going to run down that tunnel, uh, run down that ramp, and do the things that they do on the court. When did you find out? When did you find out? When did you find out? When did I find out? When did you make the decision? Last night. And was it to Dan? Was there a phone call? To the athletic director, yeah, last night. Uh, you said you just signed the new deal. It kicks in in April 1st. So as far as the buyout goes, your new buyout was a million dollars. Is that still the situation? I have no idea. That's for legal people. I don't know anything about that. Oh, I, I wouldn't know. I'm sorry. That 48 hour period. When were you informed? Was it presented to you by Steve as a done deal? Or did, did you know that talks were ongoing? Um, talks ongoing. To Paul. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. just yeah, talking. no, I uh, basically talking to um, UCLA and their administration. Um, and then uh, I texted Paul last night, and we got on the phone early this morning. Okay. But Paul, was it presented to you as a done deal the first time you? I, I got a call from uh, Dan Guerrero <coughs> late last night. I, I was uh, I had already uh, retired for the evening, so I didn't take I didn't get the call. But Dan left me a message. And then Coach Alford and I talked this morning, and uh, I, um, you know Steve's done a great job here. And, and as, as sad and disappointing as I am, um, I, I, you know, he, Steve was very direct in our conversations and very honest and very uh, appreciative of the time here. And it was clear that he had made up his mind, and that's what he thought was in the best interest of, of he and his family. And, and, I, and I respect that. Coach, what was your reaction when you heard that UCLA wanted you? Um. It's hard. I think it just grew on me. Um, you know, the initial reaction, you're comparing it to what we have here. And I think what we have here is a top 20 program, not just team, top 20 program. And we've, we've proven that. Um, so I think as I started thinking about it, it was a, it was a humbling experience because of my roots. I, I grew up in Indiana from first grade through fourth grade. I lived in Martinsville, Indiana, home of John Wooden. <laughs> uh, I was going into the gym, uh, that, he went to a lot and so you know I've grown up knowing that the 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 breakfast of legends to honor John Wooden is something I've been to every year at the final four on a Saturday morning and they honor John Wooden in that breakfast and you know now you start thinking about I'm going to be there on Saturday I'm walking into that breakfast as a head coach at UCLA there's a <laughs> it's a it's a very humbling experience but uh it does prove that um what we've done here uh, people have noticed at the highest level, and I think that's what I'm going to be most proud of as I start my new era of, of coaching at UCLA uh, is how proud of I can look back and say, you know, these doors were opened and um, this opportunity presented itself because of what took place at UNM. Coach, there's already players on the current UNM team talking about what their future is. I'm curious what your message would be to them. Would you accept transfers from UNM? Well, it's hard. You know, I don't want anything but – success for this program uh you know i want them to continue to be successful so th there's gonna be a lot of emotions today jeff um players uh, you know I, I, they should be upset they should be frustrated um i'm upset i'm frustrated even though i'm very excited and it's a happy day uh, for me and my family uh there's some sadness to it too and part of that is the players uh, because you grow very attached to them you're with them every day you're developing them in every way shape and form socially academically athletically uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and I think sometimes you don't know how attached coaches get to their players. And so those emotions will – got to let some time 
uh, time go by and those emotions, we will, I will always have contact with our players, continue to help them as much as possible. We missed a lot of schooling with all of our travel. With um, you know, we, Our last two games were on the road. Vegas was all week. Uh, we were gone again uh, for the national tournament. Uh, their concentration right now is academically. And there will be time to see how all those things of, of how players react to it, there will be time for that. Uh, what are some of the things that strengthens you as a coach here at UNM? They're going to aid you in the future. They made you attractive. Well, I'm six years. I'm six years older. Um, you know, so I got. I've had eight years at um, at the University of Iowa at a BCS school, and then I got six years here. Um, you know, previous stops at Missouri State and Manchester College. So, you know, now I'm getting into my mid 20s as far as experience goes. Um, be my 23rd, 24th year next year. So, this place helped equip me um, for trying to keep and take UCLA to higher levels of excellence, um, the excellence that we had here for six years. It's been consistent. Uh, from day one, we've consistently strived for excellence. Uh, our record shows that. Our academic record shows that. Uh, graduation rate uh, from placing our student athletes in jobs, all those things point to excellence. And I think UCLA is about excellence. So uh, hopefully I can continue the things that we're able to do here at UNM at that same kind of level there. Coach, oh, that, that being said, are you able to admit that the lack of NCAA tournament success here doesn't show excellence? Yeah, yeah. How yeah, about yeah. future Lobos, guys that have signed to want to play under you here as Lobos? Are they going to try and follow you now, or what, what, what's that, that step? Well, I, again, I think the emotion will die down, you know, in 48 hours or so. And, you know, the, the school obviously will be in contact with those individuals and um, just try to work through it uh, the best possible way. And, you know, hopefully that means they're going you know, to stay at UNM and be Lobos. Paul, what are your thoughts on Coach Neal and him being the possible lead candidate for this job? Uh, I, I, Coach Alford's made it um, – clear to, to me and to Tim Cass that he has the highest respect for Craig. Uh, you know, you, you, you have, if you've been around the program for the last six years, it's not hard to understand that, that Coach Neal has had a strong impact on the program. Coach Alford's given him a lot of uh, freedom in the, within the program, and, and Craig's a critical part of the success. So I, I think Craig's an outstanding coach. We've, we have named him interim head coach. Uh, he's in charge of the program. Uh, Craig uh, is a candidate for the head coaching job, the, the permanent job. Uh, but beyond acknowledging that, I'm not going to really talk about any candidates uh, uh, or the, uh, you know, regarding the search itself. But I think Craig right now adds stability to the program. I think, uh, th as Steve has alluded to it, this is a very emotional time. And uh, there's no good way to... Uh, break the news to the young men in the program. Uh, it, it, those are the guys that I feel sorry for or feel for right now because it's such an emotional time. Uh, Coach Alford's been such a huge part of their life and their development as, as people as well as basketball players. And they're all losing a, a, a father figure. Uh, and so it's hard. And, and there's a lot of raw emotion right now. Uh, I think. Uh, my expectation is that, that Craig uh, creates some immediate stability and continuity in the program, that he'll reach out, if he hasn't already, to the recruits. Uh, and, and our challenge <coughs> is to find a permanent replacement, be that Craig or, or somebody else, as, as quickly and as thoroughly and as judiciously as we can. Paul, you talked about the $1 million buyout and the new 10-year contract being a little bit of a protection for the program. Um, that contract, correct me if I'm wrong, does not take effect until April 1st. So there is no million dollar buyout. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not a lawyer. You heard Steve, you know, Coach Alford and I haven't even talked about that. I, there, there was a, a letter of agreement signed. Is that, is, is that a contract? Is where, you know, our, our lawyers, here's what I know, Jeff. Coach's old contract had a buyout in it and his, and the new contract that, uh, that was, being written that was being written based off a letter of agreement had a buyout in it. One way or the other, there's a buyout. How much that is, uh, Steve and I haven't talked about it. Our respective lawyers haven't talked about it, so I can't tell you what that number is. I do know there is a buyout. Steve, did you talk with Dan Guerrero at all about a possible buyout, UCLA being on the hook for any sort of buyout? 
Well, I'm not going to talk about our contract negotiations. Most of that happened between Dan and his staff and my agent, so I'm not I'm not for sure what all was talked about. Coach so UCLA. Talk about how you feel, I mean, because uh, I know coaches come and go all the time and stuff like that, but you guys had this. ADs just you know, stay forever, don't they, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it must be disappointing every time something like this happens, and, you know, you guys thinking that he's going to be here for a while, but, you know, he's got to go and what's the best for his family and stuff like that. Well, uh, I didn't. I certainly didn't think I'd be sitting here today having this discussion. Uh, but as I, you know, when you really let's take let's take a step back. And um, six years ago, we're in the play and we're in the pigtail game in the Mountain West Conference. We're getting our ass kicked. You know, we were not a very good basketball team. And uh, the previous writer for the journal was always fond of reminding us a uh, alleged crowd of X number of people in the building. Uh, the program was struggling, and uh, we're s six years removed. We've won back-to-back uh, -back regular season and conference championships. We're ranked. We've been in the NCAA tournament. Uh, the crowds uh, were consistently average over 11,000 a, uh, a year in season tickets. Uh, when you look at where we were and where we are, this program is in remarkably better shape. We're, we're uh, probably a top 25, top 20. So, you know, we're going to be ranked most likely heading into next year at the beginning of the year. So uh, you never want to see a, a coach leave. Uh, but when they have an opportunity to leave and better themselves, you know, you, you, you know that's part of the business. What I've always maintained is that when a coach leaves, you want the program to be better off than when they came. And, and uh, as I've just stated, there's absolutely no question that this program's been moved uh, in, in tremendous ways and the national profile and all the attention. So uh, I, 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 I can't sit here and, and be critical of Steve. Uh, he has to make a decision that he thinks in his, is his best personal and professional interest and, and family interest. Uh, our families are good friends, so it, it's, it's disappointing, but I understand it. It, it is part of the business, and uh, our challenge now, Van, is to go out and uh, find the next leader, be that Coach Neal or somebody else, to advance this program even farther, take it even higher than, than Coach Alford has, and that responsibility rests with me and, and, and my staff, and uh, it's really how an AD is ultimately judged. Coach, do you have any regrets in the past six years? No, no. I've um, I've had an incredible uh, journey here. Uh, I've loved everything about UNM, from administration to m my coaching staff to our players to the staff that's under me. From whether it's marketing or sports information or trainer or strength coach or academic advisor, uh, travel agent. Uh, we've had so much help in uh, developing our program, and as Paul's alluded to. Um, we took over a tough situation, and now he's exactly right. It's a top 20 program. And to do that and build that in a six-year period um, and graduate our young men, uh, everything that we dreamed of as a coaching staff from day one or that trip we took to the Bahamas that we didn't think we could even come back and win five games, um, the things that we've been able to do in my mind are remarkable. Um, and I feel very pleased with that, um, of the mark and the program. and. Yeah, it's, it's a sad day for me in a lot of ways in that um, I'm leaving something that I've had a lot of hand in and building. Uh, but it makes me very proud that I feel like it's uh, in much better shape. Uh, and the culture of men's basketball uh, has a real identity to it, not just on the court, but uh, in the classroom as well. You said that Sweet Six, you told us Wednesday that Sweet 16 wasn't the specific benchmark you were putting on this program. Would you, is UCLA going to accept not having I have, I have no idea what UCLA is going to accept. Um, Sweet 16, as I alluded to Wednesday, no other UNM team has made it to the Sweet 16. So um, there obviously is a hang-up here on Sweet 16, but no other team has ever done that. If you look at our six years here, uh, we've got a lot of firsts. A lot of first. Uh, it would be another press conference to talk about uh, all the first that we've done, from road wins to championships to grad rate um, to APRs to you name it. 
uh, there's been a lot of first. And the one thing we weren't able to do in six years was to become the first Lobo team to make it to the Sweet 16. And hopefully the next guy that comes in here will be able to do that. UCLA is one of the most storied programs in college basketball, but they aren't what they used to be type deal. Was there any hesitation in this job thinking that maybe you could do more in the immediate future here this next year and the year after than you could at UCLA? Well, all that plays in. Um, as Paul's already talked about, we got a top 15 team coming back. Um, <clears throat> regardless if Tony comes back or not, it was a, it was going to be a top 15 team. You know, we liked what was coming in recruiting wise and the guys that were sitting out. You know, sometimes those guys sitting out, you kind of forget about them, but uh, they've had great sit out years and worked very hard. So, yeah, all that you know plays into it. You know, I I thought of, I thought it through. I thought through everything I possibly could. And again, it's not about has nothing to do about UNM. It has nothing to do with Albuquerque. And this has been arguably one of the favorite places we've ever lived as a family. Uh, I guarantee if you ask our family members, uh, this has been easily our favorite place we've ever lived. So those decisions are hard. Those are really hard. Um, but when you look at the big picture of UCLA and everything that comes with that, um, I just thought it was the best decision. But it had nothing to do uh, with – there wasn't something right here. Everything was in place. That's what made the decision so very difficult. Was that everything was right here, and that makes it very that makes it very very hard. Corey and Bryce. What's your reaction, Corey and Bryce? See, the word emotions been kicked around, and you got an incredibly passionate fan base whose emotions have been all over the place. The last few days, they heard the other day about loyalty and, and concessions and, and long term contracts. Now they're going to come to grips with this, and, and there's going to be criticism. They're going to be all over the place. What do you say to that long-term loyal local fan who's just been all over the place in the last ten? It's, years? I understand that, and, and that's hard. It's it's trying to understand this business. Um, you know, early in the week, um, UCLA wasn't even in the picture. Uh, I, nobody would have even talked about UCLA because there was no UCLA. Um, you don't know when those phone calls come. You don't know when those opportunities come. Uh, I would tell that fan base what we've created here in the last six years have been able to create an opportunity like UCLA. And after looking at it, I just thought it was it was a great opportunity for me. It was a great opportunity for my career, uh, for our family. Um, but again, it had nothing to do with – it was. I, I, as on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, I thought this was where I was going to be. I, I could see myself retiring here. We love the community. We love the people. Uh, there's so many positives about it, but this is the, in my business, this is the pinnacle of my business. We'll put you over the top because it is one of those top tier traditional schools. Was it the money? Was it the package? Was it the? No, money? it's not. No, I mean obviously contracts are contracts, but no, it's it's UCLA. It's um, 11 national championships. There, there is no. It's not just the top tier. It's not just one of. It's the most storied college basketball on the men's side program. In the history of college basketball, and that's a huge draw when you're when you're a gym rat, <laughs> when you you know you look back at your kindergarten days and your first grade days, and you're just in the gym trying to heave the thing to the basket, and you're doing that in John Wooden Gym in Martinsville, Indiana, and all of a sudden UCLA calls, you listen, and it was tough. I, I'm being very honest with you, it's tough. It's not like I'm leaving here for a low Division One job or a mid major. Um, it took a place. It took a place like UCLA, the best of the best. Uh, when you speak excellence, it is the top of the list. It took a place like that to make me think. Let's try it. I'm 48 years old. Let's, let's try it. I don't know how long I'm gonna do this. Um, we got a chance to do something very special at a high level. Let's try it. Uh, I've done everything I could here to make it a better situation uh, for the next guy that'll be here. I've had wonderful six years but it was UCLA. Had it been anybody else, and there were others, had it been anybody else, um, it's emphatically no, but UCLA's a little different.